Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Tonight, the team took the new commanders from the core set in 2021, cranked them as high as they could, and we will see how they do in a CEDH setting. We do want to quickly say that M21 had some decent cards for CEDH, but it didn't really give us a lot in the way of competitive commanders. We did do our best to tune our decks as best we could for a CDH setting, but in all honesty, they probably ended up on a 7 to 8 power scale when all is said and done. Before we start tonight, we wanted to let everyone know that our playmats are finally back in stock. Go to playingwithpowermtg.com and pick up a playmat. We also have all kinds of other merchandise available in our store, and all purchases help grow the channel. This episode was also brought to you by Patreon. We love our patrons and love playing games, streaming, and just hanging out with them in the Discord. Tiers and rewards start at just $2 per month, and there are all kinds of perks. Click the link in the description below and sign up today. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike piloting Ren and Siri, inseparable. This deck, called Blood Pod, is a stacks deck seeking to slow down the board while digging for pet theme combos like Team or Sabretooth and Perforos can't believe I'm narrating this. Mike's opening hand contains a Carpet of Flowers, Avon Mind Sensor, Finale of Devastation, Noxus Revival, Dranith Magistrate, Temple Garden, and Averted Catacombs. Next, we have Ryan piloting Subira, Tulzidi Caravanner. This deck is an aggro deck seeking to go wide with creatures and execute the conspicuous Snoop combo with Kiki Jiki. Ryan's opening hand contains a Tempt with Vengeance, Goblin Sharpshooter, Impact Tremors, Mox Diamond, and Three Mountains. After that, we have Folger, piloting Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. This deck seeks to ramp and draw a lot of cards until it can find one of its combo pieces, like Exquisite Blood, to combo off for the win. Folger's opening hand contains an Urza's Bobble, Wayfarer's Bobble, Knight's Whisper, Blood Tribute, and Three Swamps. Finally, we have Adam, piloting Niambi, Esteemed Speaker. This deck is a control deck looking to control the board and gain advantage before going for an attrition or combo win. Adam's opening hand contains a Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, Looter Ilkor, Chain of Vapor, Mana Vault, the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, and two Snow-Covered Islands. Without further ado, let's kick off this bombastic blundering of Boisterous Brothers. Ryan wins the What's in the Bowl challenge and gets to start us off. Ryan draws a card for turn and then plays a Mountain. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Mountain. He casts an Impact Tremors. Ryan passes. Mike draws a card for turn and then plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it for a Taiga. He casts a Carpet of Flowers and gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws a card for turn and then plays a Snow-Covered Island. He casts a Mana Vault. Adam passes. Folger draws a card for turn and then plays a Swamp. He casts an Urza's Bobble. He does Mitch Proud and casts a Wayfarer's Bobble. He sacks his Urza's Bobble, looking at a card in Adam's hand, which is a Tabernacle of Vendril Vale. All through, Folger passes. During Ryan's upkeep, Folger draws a card off of Urza's Bobble. He draws and then plays a Mountain for turn. He casts an Imperial Recruiter. It enters and Impact Tremors triggers, dealing one damage to his opponents. Then Recruiter's ETB triggers, and Ryan searches up a Goblin Recruiter into his hand. Ryan passes. Mike draws, and in his first main phase, he adds one white through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts an Avon Mind Sensor, and then gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws, and then plays a Hall of Heliod's Generosity. He casts Looter Ilkor. Adam passes. Folger draws and then plays a Swamp for turn. He decides to chance it and cracks his Wayfarer's Bobble, searching for a Swamp, but only searching the top four through Avon Mind Sensor. He finds a land and puts it onto the battlefield and then shuffles. With nothing else, Folger gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and in his first main phase, he casts Goblin Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter enters, Impact Tremors triggers, and each opponent takes one. He attacks Folger with his Imperial Recruiter and gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws, and in his first main phase, he adds one white through his carpet. He casts a Dranith Magistrate. The table sighs, and Mike attacks Folger with his Avon Mind Sensor. Mike passes. Adam draws, and then moves to combat, attacking Folger with his Looter. Folger takes the hit, Adam's Looter triggers, and he draws and discards a card. In his second main phase, Adam plays a Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. The rest of the table is creature heavy, so they wonder how they're going to get out of this situation. Adam then casts an Azor's Gateway. Adam ends his turn. Folger draws and then plays a Swamp for turn. He casts a Jet Medallion. He casts a Blood Pet. He casts a Spring Leaf Drum. He then casts a Knight's Whisper, drawing two cards and losing two life. 
Folger passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan's creatures trigger through Tabernacle. Ryan pays for his Goblin Sharpshooter. He then responds to his Imperial Recruiter by activating his Sharpshooter, targeting Avon Mind Sensor. Mind Sensor dies, Sharpshooter triggers, and Ryan untaps it. He activates Sharpshooter again, targeting Looter Ilkor. Looter dies, and then Ryan untaps Sharpshooter again. He activates Sharpshooter again, targeting Blood Pet. In response, Folger sacrifices it for a black. Since Blood Pet died, Sharpshooter triggers, and Ryan untaps it. Then the original ability fizzles. He activates Sharpshooter one more time, shooting Draneth Magistrate. With nothing else, the Tabernacle trigger resolves, and Ryan sacrifices his Imperial Recruiter. Sharpshooter triggers, and Ryan untaps it. Ryan draws for turn, and in his first main phase, he casts a Goblin Recruiter. Recruiter enters, Tremors triggers, Ryan's opponents take one, and then Recruiter's ETB resolves. Ryan fetches up a Conspicuous Snoop, Torch Courier, and a Kiki-Jiki Mirror Breaker onto the top of his library. All through, Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike casts Noxious Revival, putting Vernon Catacombs onto the top of his library. During his upkeep, Mike pays for Drana through Tabernacle. He draws, and in his first main phase, he has one red through his carpet. He plays a Vernon Catacombs for turn. He cracks it for a forest. He casts an Imperial Recruiter of his own. Recruiter enters, and Mike fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He attacks Folger with his Draneth Magistrate, and then gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws, and then starts off his turn by activating his Azor's Gateway, drawing and exiling an island. He casts his own Urza's Bobble. He cracks it, targeting Mike and looking at a card in Mike's hand. Mike reveals a Finale of Devastation. Adam plays a Snow-Covered Island for turn, and then gives the turn to Folger. During Folger's upkeep, Adam draws a card through Urza's Bobble. Folger draws, and then plays a Swamp for turn. He casts Mind Blade Render. He follows up with a Liliana of the Veil. He activates Liliana's second ability, targeting Mike. In response, Ryan activates Goblin Sharpshooter, targeting Mike's Imperial Recruiter, trying to force him to remove Draneth Magistrate. Recruiter dies, and Ryan untaps Sharpshooter. Liliana's ability resolves, Mike sacrifices his Draneth Magistrate, and Ryan's Sharpshooter triggers again. Ryan responds to his trigger by activating Sharpshooter, targeting Liliana, killing her. Then the trigger resolves, and Ryan untaps Sharpshooter. Now freed up, Folger casts his commander, Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. He casts an Inquisition of Kozilek, targeting Ryan. Ryan reveals his hand, and Folger makes him discard Mog Fanatic. All through, Folger passes. During his upkeep, Ryan's creatures trigger through Tabernacle. In response, Ryan activates Goblin Sharpshooter, targeting Folger. Ryan lets his Goblin Recruiter die, triggering Sharpshooter, untapping it. He activates Sharpshooter again, targeting Folger again, pinging them for one. Then Tabernacle resolves, Ryan doesn't pay, and Sharpshooter is destroyed. Ryan draws for turn, and in his first main phase, he casts Conspicuous Snoop. It enters, Tremors triggers, and Ryan's opponents take one. Ryan reveals a Torch Courier from the top of his library. He casts Torch Courier through Snoop's ability from the top of his library. Tremors triggers, dealing one to Ryan's opponents. Ryan reveals Kiki-Jiki from the top of his library. Ryan sacrifices Torch Courier, targeting Conspicuous Snoop. In response, Adam casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Snoop, bouncing it back to Ryan's hand. Everyone else sighs a sigh of relief, and Ryan passes the turn. Mike draws for turn, and in his first main phase, he adds two red through his carpet. He casts a Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Mike creates six treasures. He casts Perforos, God of the Forge, or should I say, Perforos, since this is a cat-themed deck. Mike, stop making me narrate this stuff. Mike casts an Arbor Elf. In enters, Perforos triggers, and Mike's opponents take two. All through, Mike passes. Adam draws for turn, and then plays a Scalding Tarn. He does nothing else, and passes. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He draws for turn, and then attacks Adam with his Mind Blade Render. Adam takes it, and Folger pays one life and draws a card. In his second main phase, he casts a Grim Monolith. Folger ends his turn. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, he casts an Immolation Shaman. In response, not wanting to get pinged, Adam cracks his Scalding Tarn, fetching up a Hollowed Fountain into play tapped. He then activates his Azor's Gateway, drawing and exiling Urza, Lord High Artificer. With nothing else, Shaman enters. Impact Trimmers triggers, and his opponents take one. Ryan passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike pays for his Dockside through Tabernacle and lets his Arbor Elf die. He draws, and in his main phase, he adds three white through his carpet. He casts Silence. Everyone knows he's about to go off, and Silence resolves. 
This is when Mike realized he miscalculated the mana requirements to win. So he goes into the tank for a long time, thinking about how he's going to win here. Finally, he realizes he doesn't have an out, so he casts Mirror Entity. It enters, Perforos triggers, and Mike's opponents take two. Mike then casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals three. He fetches up an Eidolon of Rhetoric onto the battlefield, triggering Perforos again, dealing two more. All through, and reluctantly, Mike passes. Adam draws, and then casts an Azorius Signet. He activates Azor's Gateway. Immolation Shaman triggers, and Adam takes one. Adam then draws a card and exiles a snow-covered island. All through, Adam passes. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He draws for turn, and then moves to combat, attacking Adam with his Mind Blade Render. Adam takes it, and Folger pays one life and draws a card. In a second main phase, Folger casts Blood Tribute, targeting Mike. He taps his veto, which is a vampire, to pay its kicker cost. It resolves, Mike loses half his life, and Folger gains that much life. Since Folger gained life, veto triggers, and Folger targets Mike, making him lose the other half of his life and killing him. Next, Folger casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Folger passes. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He draws a card, and in his first main phase, he casts a Mana Crypt. He then casts Tent with Vengeance, where X equals three. He creates three elementals with haste, and no one takes him up on his tempting offer. Impact Tremors triggers, and Ryan's opponents each take three. He attacks Folger with his Immolation Shaman and his new hasty elementals. Folger takes it, and Ryan ends his turn. Adam draws for turn, holds up mana, and passes. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He draws for turn, and then moves to combat, attacking Adam with his Mind Blade Render. Adam takes it, Mind Blade triggers, and Folger draws a card and loses one life. In his second main phase, he casts Brain Maggot. It enters, Folger chooses Adam, and Adam reveals his hand. He reveals Dovin's Veto, Disenchant, Lotus Petal, and a Gyre Reach Sanitarium. Folger exiles the Dovin's Veto. Next, Folger casts Necropotence. He pays seven life and exiles seven cards through Necropotence. He moves to his end step, puts the cards into his hand, and then discards to hand size, exiling the cards. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He draws for turn and then moves to combat, attacking Folger with his Immolation Shaman and his three elementals. Folger blocks an elemental and takes the rest. Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Adam flashes in his commander, Niambi, esteemed speaker. Also in the end step, he activates Azor's Gateway. Immolation Shaman triggers and Adam takes one. He draws a card and exiles a Mox Diamond. He then moves to his turn. During his upkeep, Adam pays for his Niambi through Tabernacle. He draws for turn and then casts a Jetaxian Probe, targeting Folger. He looks at Folger's hand and draws a card. Next, he activates Niambi, discarding Gyre Reach Sanitarium. Immolation Shaman triggers and Adam takes one. He then draws two cards. He plays a Cephalid Colosseum for turn and passes to Folger. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He doesn't draw due to Necropotence and then moves to combat, attacking Adam with Mind Blade Render. Adam takes it, Mind Blade triggers, and Folger draws a card and loses one life. He plays a Cabal Coffers for turn. He casts a Mana Vault. He pays two life into Necropotence, exiling two cards. He moves to his end step, putting the Necro cards into his hand, and then discards to hand size. Folger passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Immolation Shaman through Tabernacle and lets his Elementals die. Also in his upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws, and in his main phase, he recasts Conspicuous Snoop. Impact Tremors triggers, and his opponents take one. He reveals the top card of his library, which is a Bag of Holding. Ryan casts a Scroll Rack. He attacks Adam with Immolation Shaman and passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Adam taps his Cephalid Colosseum to activate Azor's Gateway. Immolation Shaman triggers, and Adam takes one. Adam then draws a card and exiles an Arcane Signet. During his upkeep, Adam pays for Niambi through Tabernacle. He draws for turn, does nothing else, and passes. At the end of Adam's turn, Folger pays four to untap Grim Monolith. Immolation Shaman triggers, and Folger takes one. During his upkeep, Folger pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. He moves directly to his main phase and plays a Swamp for turn. He activates Cabal Coffers, adding six black to his pool. He casts a Crypt Cast. Worried about what's about to happen, Adam responds by casting Mana Drain, countering the spell. Next. Folger casts Everflowing Chalice, kick twice. He activates Veto, giving his creatures lifelink until end of turn. He attacks Adam with his Mind Blade Render. Adam takes a hit, 
Folger gains one life, and then he loses one life and draws a card. He then pays two life into Necropotence, exiling two cards. He moves to his end step and puts the cards into his hand. Folger passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his creatures through Tabernacle. Also in his upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws for turn and reveals a mountain on the top of his library. He casts Bag of Holding. He casts Skirk Prospector. He attacks Adam with his Immolation Shaman. Adam takes it, and Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Adam activates Azoria's Signet, adding a blue and a white. He uses the blue to cast Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Day of Judgment onto the top of his library. He then uses his white floating to activate Azor's Gateway. Immolation Shaman triggers, and Adam takes one. With Azor's ability on the stack, Ryan responds by activating his Scroll Rack, taking one card from his hand and swapping it with one card on top of his library. The card revealed on the top of his library is a Kiki Jiki, Mirror Breaker. He activates the Kiki ability through Conspicuous Snoop, making a copy of itself. The copy enters, and Impact Tremors triggers, and Ryan's opponents each take one. He demonstrates a loop of making copies of Conspicuous Snoop and dealing damage through Impact Tremors until the table is dead. Ladies and gentlemen, the M21 decks made a very interesting showing tonight. Let's take a look at some highlights. First, Mike could have won on his turn he had cast Silence had he counted up his mana differently. If he had untapped his forest through Arbor Elf before he let it die through Tabernacle and not cast Silence, he could have won on his turn. Of course, he didn't know what Adam had in his hand, which is why he cast Silence in the first place. It looked a lot like Folger was being targeted with damage and attacks throughout this game. This was because Mono Black uses its life as a resource heavily to win, and stifling this is a key to keep it from gaining advantage. Things like Necropotence and Ad Nauseam are far less effective when you are at a lower life total. Folger's two card combo with Veto and Blood Tribute was really cool to see, essentially taking out a player with one card. The rest of his draws, however, were very lackluster, with most of it being ramp with nothing to do with it. Adam was doing a good job of playing Table Police, but he was against three other decks that weren't heavy on the control plan, and it was proving hard to keep up. He still did very well in bluffing control on his hand through his untapped mana, and it was doing a good job of making players hold back. Ryan knew of Adam's disenchant because of Folger's Brain Maggot. He knew that unless the time was right, Adam could easily end his combo attempt. So, Ryan waited until Adam was tapped out and out of white mana before he could go for the win. One of the more valuable things about tonight's game is keeping track of information when it was revealed. Jataxian probes, Urza's baubles, brain maggots, and inquisitions all kept letting people know what was in everyone's hands, which is much more valuable than people give credit for. The player of the game was Ryan. He was applying pressure and dealing with threats as they came. He had good answers and resources to be able to deal with disruption. The most valuable card was a tough call. At first, we considered Tabernacle, as it was stifling mana from players on the creature plan, which, by the way, was every other deck at the table. The players, however, didn't have too much trouble paying for it. Another card we considered was Goblin Sharpshooter. The turns it was on the board, it was hosing everyone's creatures and doing a lot of work in dealing with problems for Ryan. At the end of the day, though, we had to give the most valuable card to Conspicuous Snoop. Not only did it win Ryan the game, it almost won him the game on turn five. This card's insane value of casting from the top of the library combined with the combo potential makes this card absolutely amazing and definitely the most valuable card of this game. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.